Hi guys, I'm Marco D'Ambros and today I would like to share with you some real tips about Maya and Matrix. I was talking with a friend of mine about my collision node. Uh, my collision node is made in C++ and is a little bit more complex. But I found this example very interesting to show uh, the mass under the wound. The mass under the hood. This is pretty the same. So start to create. Um, so I start to create with my collision mesh. What we need is a control, and I use a locator like my control. So this will be my control. This will be my collision collision mesh. I need a um, Collision point, and we'll see later what um what I need or what I'm looking for. And I need an object body cube. So yeah, it's, it's the same as the cube. So just this one off just for the moment. So now that I've created all these things, uh, the first thing that I need to um find the first step is find the closest point on the mesh. Mm. So I create a node closest point on the mesh. You can use other node like other nodes like a uh, like the follicle. So I need my mesh. I need the transform of my mesh, collision mesh, and the mesh as well. So I go to connect the out mesh inside the in mesh. Every time then you connect the out mesh with a node, not just the closest point on mesh. Uh, you need to remember then the, the out mesh is a lot is a kind of local mesh. And so you need to plug the uh, wood matrix of the transform as well. Or every time then you go to move your your um, your mesh with the transform, the result of uh, the closest point of mesh or the other node uh, will be locally, eh? so it's not right for what we need. Um, you can use instead to do this com combination. You can use the word mesh. It's almost the same. So now then we connect these two. We take our collision point. Decompose matrix. If you don't find decompose matrix node, it means that the matrix node plug is not plug is not low. So just go to the settings uh, plugin manager and load it. Word matrix, input matrix, and auto translator like position. So I know the posi uh, in position on the word space. Why are using this combination? I know the uh, the shape. Um, the locator shape node as a word position, but you need to think about um, then this control could be any kind of node, any kind of noob shapes, etc., etc. So maybe that node has not um, has not a word position attribute. If I use the word matrix, I love to use this way because if I use the word matrix, I can change in any moment of my process the hierarchy of my control of my collision point, and the result will be always the correct one. So now that I plug my uh, word matrix inside input matrix, uh, auto to translate, I can get my object. I call object. Maybe it's, oh, cool. I call object and I go to plug the result position with the translate. So now when I move it, I have the closest point on the mesh and everything is worked fine, of course. So I go to change a little bit in my mesh. If you can see now, a little bit more. I will like something. Yeah. Um, how you can see now, everything is follow right, but my cube, as, um, my object, has not, um, hasn't uh, any kind of uh, orientation. Inside the result of a closest point on mesh, we have like we have the normal. So instead to uh, create a combination of uh, locator, aim constraint, and etc. etc., we can see now how easy it is to create um, a matrix in Maya. So if I want to create a matrix in Maya, I can use the node 4x4 matrix. The 4x4 matrix um, is a node that contains 16 attributes. We can see now. And so these 16 attributes represent the 16 number of my matrix. So now, um, it's very important to know that uh, if I want to create an uh, orientation matrix, the orientation part of the matrix is um, created by three vector. And these three vectors need to be perpendicular one with each other if we don't want to have the share effect. And normalize as well if you don't want to have the scaling. So the uh, one way to uh, create a perpendicular vector from ones is with a cross product. If I want to do a cross product in Maya, I can use the vector product node. Sorry. The vector product node. 
And inside the vector node prod, we can show the cross product like operation and normalize the output. Now we explain why one um, I want to uh, normalize output. I would say before, if the uh, output is not normalized, it's not a problem that we have in this case, but could be in the future. If you don't have a normalized output, you have a um, scale matrix. You, you scale the matrix. So now, just because it's much more easy to read, I put the object here. So as you can see now, my vector is 0, 1, 0. I'm using input 2 because um, it's not really an error if I change the order. But uh, if I change the order, the direction of my vector will be different or will be the vice versa. So for this example, the right order is normal, like up vector will be the second one, and my first one will be the vector 1, 0, 0. So this is a represent of my axe Z. So uh, we have the axe Z, so it's my third one. The second one is my normalized axe Y, or up vector, and now I need now I need the, the first axis. So in the same way that I made the axis Z, we can do the X here. I go to check then I uh, use the operation cross product, cross product, and use normalize, normalize output. I go to take my normal, like input 1, and my output, like input 2. So now that I have all these three vector, I can go to connect everything, so I create my matrix, so output x of the first axis z, axis x, sorry, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 2. I go to take the normal of my closest point to mesh, then we determine that this is the up vector, so 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 2, and the z1. So now that I have a plug all these three vectors, I have uh, orientation matrix, I need a fourth vector for determining the position, so the last vector uh, is, is a point much more than a vector um, is determined by my position so 3 0 3 1 3 2 cool now that I have all these connections I can go to substitute this connection that I made before translate with this matrix um, Maya doesn't permit us to connect directly um, matrix inside transform so every time then we work in ma with a matrix and we want to uh, put the value inside a um, transform, I need to use the decompose matrix. So input matrix. And now here we have how to translate, how to output, rotate. If you want you can connect the scale and share as well, but we don't need it for this example. So now how you can see is work absolutely like before, but when I change the mesh, my cube now is follow perfectly. Awesome. So now that we uh, we determine what is my um, object, uh, my closest point on the mesh, I mean uh, my collision point, and I have my 4x4 four four matrix, we can call like matrix on the mesh. We need to uh, find a kind of uh, the difference between my, my collision point and the closest point on the, on the mesh. Um, to do this kind of difference, it's not really a difference, but it's easy to understand. We can multiply, so we, we go to create a multi matrix. We go to multiply the, my closest point on the mesh, the matrix on the mesh, like input 1, the same way of the cross product, the order is very important. And I go to multiply with the word matrix inverse, word inverse matrix of my collision point, like order one second order so now that I have these two connection I uh, this matrix represent for me the difference between my two objects so the matrix and uh, we can see immediately um I would like to show you because I think is a uh, is uh, much better if you visualize the results so you can just understand better what uh, we are doing now so we don't really need these this matrix, um, this uh, locator, but I create for you, so just for a visualization of this res result. Like before, I'm, I use the decompose matrix to um, to connect my matrix to my transform. So translate, translate, and rotate, rotate. How you can see now, this cube now is, we need it. How you can see now, 
my locators represent how, f how close I am to the mesh. Okay, and much more I go close to the mesh, and much more my uh, result will be the identity matrix, so the zero matrix kind of work. So I can show you better if I am on the mesh, my second matrix will be zero. In the same way, when I have a collision, my result matrix will be positive on a translate Y. So now that we know this, it's easy to understand what is the next step. So, so now, uh, now that uh, we have our difference, we can easily uh, determine when I have a collision. So, condition, decompose matrix. So I go to connect my different matrix with decompose matrix. And I know then when my translate Y is, is less than zero, I have no connection. So go to specify then when my first number, first term is greater than zero, my condition would be true. Instead, it would be zero. OK, uh, we can do an immediately, um, immediate example to see what we have um, now. So um, one, um, I'm using now the pair blend for blending two uh, two values. You can uh, two attributes to the translate and rotation. You can use any kind of other blending. Um, I mean, anything is it's okay. So I got to take my output red value. I got to place on a weight. How you can see now, my weight is zero because I have no collision. Well, when I have a collision, my weight is will be one. So I have this one, this is my cube. Visualize again. So now what we what we want? We want then when my object is not collide, is follow 101 my control. So I go to take a brand, I have my control. As we made before, we use the decompose matrix, forget the word matrix attribute, and like the compose matrix inside like auto translate translate one auto put rotate rotate one in the same way when I have a collision when I have a collision my object I wanted to have the same position of my matrix on the mesh or my point on the mesh so decompose go to plug my decompose matrix pair blend like auto translate translate two auto Output rotate rotate two. So now that everything is connect, need this one more. We have our object, so output translate, translate, and output rotate, rotate. Cool. So now that we have this one, how you can see, now I have no collision and my cube is follow 101 my uh, my control. When I have a collision, my object will follow the mesh. And Everything now is work, so it's what we want. No collision, collision, no collision, collision. How you can see there is something then it's a little bit weird. I mean try to think about an ankle, um an ankle system or, or a car, etc. etc. When I have my ankle control, because usually when I do an AK uh system on my leg, I have, my control is on the leg, uh, is on the ankle. When I have ankle control, my collision point will be not an ankle. But is a collision point, and so this is my collision point. I want my collision point in a different position. So I go, for example, put in minus zero point five. This represents my edge of my cube. So as you can see now, when I move it and I collide, it's work almost fine. But there is this kind of gap, you know, when I collision because my collision point and my control object has two different it don't worry, it's not very difficult. So what do we have? Uh, we have the difference, so we know how much collide. What we need is a kind of offset between my control and my collision. To do this one, we can use um, the same system that Maya and any other kind of uh, 3D software use for do a parenting. 
Uh, in Maya, the parenting is made with a multiplication between two matrix, so multi-matrix again. And this time we connect the different matrix, or the or different matrix, like output one, the first output, sorry. And my world matrix, uh, world matrix from my control, like input one or the second terms. So now that we have everything, so we need to substitute the decompose matrix that we plug inside the matrix on the mesh with this new call we can call offset. It's not really an offset, but just to understand offset matrix. So matrix sun, input matrix. So now that we have this one, every time we connect, how you can see now there is no anymore, is everything is linear. Because um these the new the position of my object will be will be computed between my control and the offset of my collision point with a mesh. That's it. This is everything. Um, as you can see, it's not very difficult. That everything is made with uh, three or four steps. I would like to show you better what we have. So just to have a little resume. Um, we have our closest point of mesh where we have uh, the collision mesh, the transform, and the compose matrix, the um, world matrix collision point. From the normal and the position, we create uh, our matrix on the mesh. So with the normal, we compute the two cross product, normalize the output, and these three vectors are my rotation, my orientation of my matrix, and the position will be in the last terms. Um, so the position. From my mesh and um, matrix on the mesh, we have a difference, and we compute this difference with world inverse matrix on my collision point and then my matrix on the mesh. This difference uh, helps to us to determine when uh, I have a collision, so that we use the decompose matrix for the translate y, and uh, is offset for my control. And I'm using the pair blend. You can use every kind of other nodes for connect the for switch between collision position and not. So now that we see this one, you can feel free to try and change and increase increment with maybe a multi multi collision points and etc etc etc. So I really enjoyed. I really hope that you enjoy about this tutorial. I'm Marco D'Ambros. Feel free to do any kind of critics, feedback, um, comment. Write me, and I really hope that I can help you in some other ways. See you soon. Bye.